Lesson 19.1 Electrochemical Cells Firstly, cell potentials. The electromotive force, uh, also known as the voltage, is the cell potential and we compare that to the standard hydrogen electrode. Sometimes this also is requested to be drawn. You must get the definitions correct. Uh, that includes the one mole of hydrogen ions. That includes the correct pressure of hydrogen gas that's coming in through the top. Uh, that includes the correct temperature, 298 Kelvin, and that will give you the reference value which we arbitrarily assign to zero volts as the potential difference. So make sure you have an inert electrode there as well. Uh, make sure you've put some sort of form that will allow you to have a one molar concentration and make sure you put all the details, as, the other details as well, into the diagram. The gas that's coming from the top and the gas that's being produced down the bottom helps maintain this equilibrium here so it remains as a one molar solution, one molar concentration of hydrogen ions. So to determine the electrode values of different elements, we put the element there as the electrode and make sure it has a one molar solution of its ions, uh, the zinc ions. And here we have, as we mentioned before, the standard hydrogen electrode. The whole system has the same, 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals, and make sure you write potassium chloride in the salt bridge. So what you have then is an electrochemical series here uh, of all the values that are here. These are all reduction. You can see here that uh, they're all gaining electrons. Uh, and so let's say we have these two values here. What you're going to have is this is more positive, so this one's going to work, uh, and this one's going to have to be reversed. Uh, so it's going to be the bromine ion turning into the liquid uh, and so that's going to have its value uh, reversed as well. And this slide here is just giving you an example of what I just mentioned. This is a classic way that IB will try and trick you here. In this situation they've actually reduced, swapped it around. Uh, so if you look at the previous slide uh, you'll have fluorine is quite positive, 2.8, copper is maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.3, uh, and so what you'll have here is a, here, this is a very large, not very, very positive, and this is very negative, so they've swapped them around. Uh, they've also used very confusing terminology, oxidizing agent, uh, and so what you're having here is this is the one that gets reduced the most easiest, it's gaining the electrons, it's the most positive, they've hidden that value. Uh, if it gets reduced, it acts as an oxidizing agent. Uh, and so this is reversed here. This here is going to be a reducing agent because they're most, most likely to get oxidized here. Okay, so uh, just be very careful. Just because it's in this particular order, have a look at what the terms are saying and interpret those very carefully. So now we're going to predict the ele electrode values. Uh, we're going to do this uh, more accurately using those tables. Just remember that the positive one is the one that usually wins. In practice, if it's not 0.4 volts, it's not likely to occur. And grab the less positive one and reverse it and then take its value. So problem one, what happens if you connect a tin and a copper cell together? So first we go to our data booklet and we find the correct equations and we copy those out, writing the electrode values out. Make sure you do this because it'll save problems and transcription errors. Uh, so we take the most positive one as the copper and so we need to rewrite out and reverse the sign of the tin. We can then add those together and that gives us uh, 0.48 volts. Moving on now to Gibbs. The Gibbs free energy change can be taken from this equation that's been derived for us. It's in the data booklet and of course the Faraday constant is also in the data booklet. If you want to use non-standard conditions, which we will also do in the lab, uh, we use the Nernst equation here. So the problem, calculate the Gibbs free energy for the following voltaic cell at standard conditions. So we have here the bottom one is positive, the most positive, so we need to reverse the top one. Uh, we can then add those two together and we get 0.62 volts. We then go to the data booklet to get the correct equation and that gives us uh, 96,500 coulombs. We can substitute the volts in there. Uh, we've balanced the equation out so we know that there's two moles of electrons being transferred in this reaction. That doesn't change the electrode values. Uh, we substitute those values in and we get our final answer of 
1.2 by 10 to the 2 kilojoules. Trying to determine the products of electrolysis now. We have the general predictions as we did from standard level. Uh, so this is just a quick review. If it's high in the reactivity series, you're not likely to get it. Uh, so you might get water, uh, hydrogen from water. If it's low in the reactivity series, you're most likely to get it. Uh, polyatomic ions don't like to react, so you're most likely to get oxygen from the water. And if it's halide solutions, you'll only get them if it's concentrated enough. And so here at the cathode, as a general rule of thumb, the metal forms at the cathode. Uh, that's where reduction occurs. So you're going to get the positive metal, and that's going to join with electrons. So the positive metal plus electrons is going to form the metal, or the hydrogen gas is going to form once it gains an electron. For the anode, uh, you may get the 2 minus coming across here and losing the electrons to form a gas, or uh, you may get the non-metal, uh, which is negative, forming some sort of gas as well. So this is the general attack plan that we have. Determine which products go to the cathode and go to the anode, uh, and then go write out the equations for these. Once you've done that, grab the most positive one, and that will be the electrode potential for that. Do the same thing for the anode, write the correct equation out, which means it may need to be reversed, the electrons coming off, and again choose the most positive value, and that's the one that's most likely to occur. So these, this is the first example, electrolysis of copper sulfate. I'm going to go through three examples, but you need to get the pattern of this because it's most likely you'll get something you've never seen before. So first of all, we write out all the ions, so that's copper 2 plus sulfate, and water dissociates, so we can have uh, hydroxide and hydrogen gas and oxygen gas come off. So here we go to our data booklet. We find all the uh, possible equations. Make sure the copper is the right one. Make sure water is by itself, so cross out those erroneous ones. And so we write out uh, the water, the sulfate, the copper, and the oxygen. What we then need to do is the water by itself there turning to hydrogen gas is fine. Uh, we need to, to get the other one, we're writing it to water going to oxygen gas, so we need to reverse that and write uh, the, reverse the sign. Uh, so the top three are going to the cathode and the bottom one's going to the anode, so let's deal with that first. You can see the sulfate ion is, is not very, is not the most positive. Uh, the most positive one there is the copper. So we tick that one, that's the one that we're going to include, we cross out the rest. And we already have the, the water one that's by itself, uh, rewrite that one out because we had to reverse that. And then we can cancel, then we can add the reactions together, we can cancel out the two electrons, rewrite the equation. And of course add those two values together, and so the chemical cell. So the voltometer should give us a reading of negative 0.89 volts. Moving on to another one now, electrolysis of sodium chloride. Uh, this is in water, unfortunately, so it's not a nice simple one. So we have to consider not just sodium and chloride ions, but we have to consider the water as well. Once again, go to your data booklet, write out all the possible ion equations. Separate those into which ones will go to the anode, which ones go to the cathode. So cathode are the reduced ones, adding the electrons, the anodes, uh, the negative ions going to uh, gain electrons, I lose electrons, and so we grab the most positive one on the cathode, is the least uh, negative, which is 0.83. We get the most positive one on the anode, which in this case uh, is water, but we reject that because we remember the rules for chloride ions. If it's concentrated, it's going to be the chloride ion as we mentioned on the previous slide. So we, if we're going to do a concentrated solution of greater than 25%, so remember that number. And so we reverse that, rewrite it. Now we can cancel out the electrons and rewrite the equation, add those two numbers together, and the voltometer should give us a reading of minus 2.19 volts. Uh, and I'll just balance the equation, which will have no effect on the electrode value. Lastly, the electrolysis of, wa of water. Now water does not conduct electricity, so we need to put some sort of uh, weak salt or sulfuric acid solution in there. Uh, this one will do sulfuric acid. So we go to the data booklet and come up with a list of possible uh, reactions. 
Now the first three are reduction at the cathode and so the bottom one we can reverse straight away, it's the only choice. Now the polyatomic ions we normally reject and then what you may have is an equilibrium here with the acid solution, it should be a good experiment. Uh, so what we just have is the hydrogen gas coming off and that'll go to completion because it's been removed from the from the solution uh, and so that's going to continually push the equation over to here. Even though this one could be happening here, uh, it's going to reach an equilibrium balance when the concentration decreases. And this one here, the hydrogen gas, is not going to. It's going to turn into a gas and disappear and be constantly forced through. Uh, the numbers are fairly similar. As we know, 0.4, anything less than 0.4 is is uh, not going to be very clear and possibly not going to work, a difference of 0.4. So we rewrite that out, we balance the equate, we balance the electrons for the top, uh, we can then do some cancelling out, add those together, that gives us a voltometer reading of minus 1.23 volts, and we can rewrite that equation and balance it out. So the current, perhaps, uh, let's just say the current is one amp. So you only have a set, a set amount of charge Q to go through. Uh, and so if you increase the charge on the iron, uh, let's say that we're having a, a metal, a metal uh, plus electrons going to a metal. All right, if you increase the amount of charge uh, on the iron, you're going to need more of this uh, electron, more electrons to react with that. And, and so what it does is actually decreases the product. Uh, if you decrease the charge on the iron, then the amount of, let's say we have two plus here, here. So if you decrease it and just make it one plus, then you have more of, more the, of the uh, charge to go around. Uh, and so you can create more of the metal. Okay, so uh, using that's probably the hardest one to understand. Once you understand that, well, throw more charge in there, uh, then of course you're going to get, uh, you put more current through the circuit, uh, and that's going to increase the amount of product. If you decrease the amount of charge through the circuit, you're going to decrease the amount. That's fairly logical, hopefully. And of course, if you do it for longer, you're going to get more. If you do it for, if you run the electricity through for less, you're going to get less. So just be aware of this one. This one's probably the, the one that people are going to get tricked on. For electroplating, uh, just be aware reduction always occurs at the cathode. Uh, so you're going to add electrons there and get the metal on there. So the uh, it's going to be forced through. Uh, so the electrons getting repelled, attracted to the positive, repelled by the negative. And so the metal ions are going to come off into a solution and be deposited here. So make sure you've got the positive cathode here as what is going to get plated and your source you must have of course uh, free metal ions in the solution and the the anode which is positive is going to be have to be made of the stuff that you want to get deposited over onto the thing you want electroplated so be aware of how to write those half equations uh, and here's just a summary of what I mentioned uh, keeping temperature, current, and constitution and concentration of solution all controlled. Um, I've, there is also a mention that uh, adding various glues actually helps as well. So what do we use electroplating for? Jewelry, uh, tin cans stops the tin uh, stops the steel from rusting, and galvanizing car parts, car tools. Remember some of those you might be asked some of those. Lastly, getting some stoichiometry back into this here you will be expected to know how many grams of uh, product is produced by using the current. So the charge here, which is measured in coulombs, is the, the amount of electricity in amps that's been put through for a certain amount of time. Uh, so that will give you the charge. The key link between that is looking at your, uh, this one has to be memorized, it's not in your data booklet. Uh, the key link here is, which is in your data booklet, is one mole of electrons uh, has a charge of 96,500 coulombs. So the final problem here, calculate the mass in grams of copper produced when a current of 1.5 amps is passed through a solution for 3.25 hours. So Q equals IT, you need to remember that, that is from IGCSE if you've done that award. Uh, so Q equals IT, 
the current is simply taken from the equation as 1.5 amps. Uh, the problem is that's per second and you've been given 3.2 value for hours. So converting it to seconds is 60 minutes in an hour. There's 60 seconds, uh, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. So you need to times it by those two values to convert it. Uh, and that'll give you 17,550 coulombs. Now I, I always use for all of chemistry these this uh, cross multiply technique uh, because the, as I've shown earlier in stoichiometry if the ratios are the same then you can multiply these and they'll be the same. So 96,500 96, coulombs is to one mole uh, so how many moles is 17,550 coulombs? It's 0.1813 moles of electrons. We can then write out the balanced equation. So two moles of electrons will give us a one mole of copper. Uh, so we do the ratio again on that. And that halves it to give us 0.091 moles of copper. Go back to our mass stoichiometry. Number of moles is mass. Uh, mass equals number of moles times molar mass. And that gives us a final value of 5.78 grams of copper.